The FDA recently granting emergency use authorization for three at-home over-the-counter tests. Among them is Quidel's Quick View test, which is available to individuals without a prescription, provided they agree to test twice within 24 to 36 hours. The authorization may prove to be a catalyst for the stock, which has fallen by nearly 13 percent in the last month after reporting a significant decline in testing demand. Joining us now for a Closing Bell exclusive is Quidel CEO Douglas Brandt. Welcome back to the show, Doug. My, my first question on this at-home test is, is how much does it cost? Because that could help us try to envision how widely available it will be used for things like opening schools and office buildings. Uh, thanks, Sarah. Uh, particularly proud of my team for having risen to the challenge once again and, and getting another EUA clearance for something that's going to be meaningful in terms of getting people back to work and back to school. Uh, we envision pricing into the retail segment uh, at a cost that would be low enough such that the re retail pharmacy would be able to um, to sell the product for less than $30 for a two-test kit. In other words, that each test would cost less than 15 Less than 15 So, So do you envision this as, as being used by schools to test every kid when they come in the door every day? How, how big is this market? Well, there's a couple different ways to think about it. One is, what is the actual at-home market? Uh, the at-home market would include, of course, that retail segment that you just asked about, uh, Sarah, but it would also include uh, employers who want employees to be tested at home because it's significantly more convenient. Of course, it's uh, beneficial to not have employees uh, show up back at work. And then there's what we would call on-site testing, and that's where I see uh, some employees, employers like ourselves, we do on-site testing uh, currently. But in addition, uh, government purchases for schools uh, and other uh, state priorities could be quite significant. The number of inquiries we've had is significant. And at this stage, what we're doing is simply saying, how many do you need for which use case? And when will you need those products? Uh, we'll use that to inform our manufacturing schedule uh, but roughly right now, we can do about one-fifth uh, of our volume of at-home tests. Uh, the other remaining product would be more for the on-site test. So I would say it would be difficult to, to fathom exactly how big this market could be, uh, but it appears, at least at this stage, to be quite significant well, and potentially endless. What is your volume uh, right now, Doug? How many have you already produced? How many can you do, and how quickly can you do them? We've had several uh, million in inventory here now anticipating the launch, uh, and we'll use that to seed uh, the market. Uh, moving forward, we're doing just around a, a, a million of tests of these at-home tests per week. Uh, we expect by the middle of the year to double that, and then by the end of the year, because of this um, uh, investment in manufacturing capacity and a new plant, uh, we expect to be at about 50 million tests per month for at-home. And then for the other legacy product that was first in the market in 2020, a product called Sophia with an instrumented system, uh, we expect to be able to do about 20 million tests per month of those. Do people need to take tests if they've been vaccinated? Well, that's a great question. I would say that what these tests will do um, is enable, as the studies show, uh, if serially performed, to determine whether somebody can actually safely leave their homes. If if I test at one point and then within 24 to 36 hours later, another test and I'm negative for both, then the data would say that I can safely uh, go to work, go to school, uh, go visit my mom. Um, but if indeed either one of those tests is positive, then, you know, I know I have an obligation to stay home. And if I need to leave for any reason, um, I for sure want to make sure that I don't expose others, wear a mask, et cetera. But I, so I think this is um, I think this is the way forward. I think this is um, you, you're seeing a shift in telemedicine, a shift to at home testing. Um, and I think this could be rather significant moving forward. My, my other question was on the variants. Do, do they is, is it accurate for all of the variants? Do you continue, do you have to update it or do you have to continue to check to make sure that it's picking it up? Because as long as we're getting these variants, it would seem to me that there will be demand for these kind of tests. 
It's it's possible. The variants that, that are uh, circulating right now uh, of significance, uh, we've tested all of them. And, and even though many people would suggest that uh, most of the mutations are occurring in uh, the spike proteins, we have seen some mutation in the nucleocapsid protein, uh, which would cause us to need to check to make sure that indeed, like the UK variant B117, uh, that we know for sure that we're uh, we're testing um, and picking up those, um, those those folks, even at low concentrations. Mr. Bryant, it's an exciting product and a big day for you. Congratulations. We'll talk to you again soon. That's Douglas Bryant joining Thank us exclusively Scott. today. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.